Hi, I'm Jack from Make Me A DJ, and in this video, we'll be taking a little look at how we can use a white noise shaker and look at ways how we can use it as almost like a transitional effect to ramp up the intensity in certain moments of the track and also use it as something that can help us create a little bit of groove. So let's just take a listen to what we've got so far. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new MIDI track. We're just going to drop an instance of analog onto this. And once we've dropped analog on there, we can just give it a little bit of an EQ just to get rid of any low end that we don't really need. From here, we're just going to turn oscillator two off and we're going to set oscillator one to a noise oscillator. And we can just start to write in some 16th notes now. And if we just duplicate those over using command D on the keyboard, What we can do is randomize these velocities as well, which is a new feature in Ableton 11. If we just select all of these notes, go to the velocity tab, and then just click randomize. That'll give us a bit more of a groove and a bit more of a live feel. So let's take a listen to what we got. So it doesn't sound all that great just yet, but if we go over to the amp envelope and just shorten the decay down, we should get a bit more of a, almost like a shaker feel to it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of saturation to this, just to make it a little bit more consistent. So it's always a good idea to EQ before and after if you're ever using any distortion or color style effects. So now that we've got our sounds, what we want to do is be able to macro this. And to map the macros, we just right click and go to group. Click this tab just over here called map. And then what we want to do is we want to assign the decay to macro one, give it its own color just to highlight it. From here, we're just going to take a little look at the minimum and maximum values just to make sure the decay isn't too short. So this decay is really short, so we can edit that by lifting up the minimum value. So somewhere around the 80 millisecond regions working for me, but you can do these to your liking however you want. So we're just going to rename this to white noise hat now and just take a listen to what it all sounds like all together in the mix. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play around with the decay length that we've macroed up just to create moments of intensity within the track. Yeah, that's sounding good at the end of every eight bars, but a little burst can sound good too. So maybe we can play on that a little bit and add an LFO to this and let it automate on its own just to keep creating little bursts of groove if we mess about with the decay times as well. We're just going to map that straight up to our decay, which is on the macro. And if we just play around, if we can get like a maybe like a 3-4 kind of rhythm. And then all we need to do is just tame the parameters until we find somewhere that we like. I'm just going to play around with some of the parameters now until I feel like we found a bit of the sweet spot. Yeah, just a bit shorter sounds a bit better. So there we go, that's how you can use white noise to create groove and little moments of intensity within your track. Creating little bursts of energy sounds good, and also we can use it to carry the groove if you use it with an LFO, just modulating up and down. Remember, LFO is a really good way to get any kind of movement going within your tracks if you feel like they sound static. Definitely something to experiment with and take a little look at in the future. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe and look out for the other ones that we've got coming soon.